Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, Chris with, uh, you know, I haven't actually came up with a name for this channel yet. Let's just call it Book Reviews with Chris. For now. Um, got another review for you guys. Um, hopefully you checked out my first one, Devolution by Max Brooks. This one, um, I'm really excited about because this book really took me by surprise. Um, it's by my favorite author, Steve Alton. And it's called The Omega Project. Artwork is really cool. I'm not sure who did it, but it's really neat. Um, this book, like I said, it really took me by surprise. I... Like I said, I, I, I've always been a big reader. I, I, I've liked it. Uh, you know, it's always, I've always enjoyed it. Uh, never really had any authors that just jumped out at me. You know, my mom was a avid reader all her life, and she loved Stephen King. Read every book that he ever wrote. So, and a lot of people are like that. They have their favorite authors. Up until my teen years, I didn't really have one. Um, until my mom comes to me one day and hands me this book. It's called Meg by Steve Alton. It was his first book. And after that, I got every book he ever read or ever, ever wrote. And I, I, I haven't written, uh, read them all, but I own every one of them and I absolutely love the way he writes. More importantly, I love the content that he writes about. Um, he, he uses the term uh, faction to describe the way he writes. Basically, he writes fiction intertwined with fact and, and science fact. Uh, I'm telling you, he's a fantastic writer, guys. Um, and like I said, this book really... I, it has actually turned into probably one of my favorite books. Um... It's it's written in the first po person first person point of view, which is which is kind of unusual for a lot of books. Um, from what I've been told by other writers, it's a hard perspective to write from, to do it well. And I'm telling you, he does a great job in this book. Um, and this is one of those books that there will be spoilers in this review, just to let you guys know. Um, so if you haven't read the book, please do not watch this video because it will give away some stuff about the book. Do not watch this video if you don't want to know what happens. But basically, and I'm going to try not to butcher this, the premise of this book revolves around this scientist who, uh, in the beginning, there's what uh, is described as the great die-off. And... The, uh, basically, mankind has run its course with oil, which leads to anarchy and, you know, mass extinction, obviously. And after that, uh, after a few years, uh, the great die-off going through its process, the uh, remaining humans come together and form another government and they look for alternative fuels and one of those fuels if i'm if i'm remembering correctly because this isn't the most recent book i've read so i'm trying to remember correctly there's a fuel a type of uh i wish i could remember what it was but uh there's a type of fuel they can actually mine from uh one of the moons of jupiter i believe called Europa and this supercomputer DNA based by the way that this main the main protagonist uh, he actually ends up creating ends up planning this mission to go there but at first before that he they plan a mission to uh, kind of get everything ready test everything out all the equipment because a whole new uh, type of uh, landing apparatus, craft, whatever you want to call it, is built to, to go to Europa, and they want to test it out first in Antarctica. So they go, the scientists, this team goes to Antarctica to test out this stuff, and, you know, they go through the process for a few weeks, and then at the end of the process, they end up 
uh, going into cryogenic stasis um, for like I think it's I think it's a month. They, they go into cryogenic stasis to uh, test out that particular part of the whole process, and that's where it really gets interesting. Uh, the main protagonist ends up waking up, and he wakes up to a completely different world, and it's actually dominated by these uh, cephalopod, squid-like, octopus-like creatures that are now land-based, which is really interesting, and they're much smarter than the, the octopus and uh, squids that we know today, and along with that, there are also these uh, hybrids, I guess you would call them, of machine and man put together, actually woman, because there's no men left, machine and women put together by this supercomputer that has survived, and the really interesting part is, it's, I think, it's like 12 million years in the future after these scientists went into cryogenic stasis. And anyway, the main protagonist goes through the whole adventure, basically. Um, kind of reminiscent of, uh, reminiscent of the Odyssey. I mean, it's just a big, great adventure. It's just filled with all kinds of stuff. The world Steve Alton creates in this is just phenomenal it's it's the detail he puts into the writing it really brings everything out you can really picture it in your mind um the the, the characters that are uh brought to life are just fantastic um the the the, the villain the, the dna computer is just it's believable and and that's what's so so beautiful or, or so great for me with Steve Alton, when it comes to writing and his faction type writing, he he has. If you didn't know any better, you would not think the guy was uh, a scientist, and uh, I'm, I'm not even, I'm not sure what he what his major was, but the way he writes science is so believable. It's so. It, uh, what's it really interesting um if you ever get into the steve alton stuff if you start looking into his books compared to reality you know it's kind of a running joke with his fans and him that he's some kind of prophet because a lot of his books uh are prerequisites to actually things coming about uh the the his first book meg um ended up being not necessarily proven, but parts of it were uh, found to be true after he wrote the book. And it's like, wow, that's that's pretty crazy. And uh, and I hope that's, I, I did a, I wrote something on one of his Facebook posts a while back. I hope it's not true with this book because this book is genuinely creepy, especially considering it could, parts of it could happen. Um, and that's what's so great about Steve Alton stuff. It's, it's so believable that you you know most of the time when i'm reading his stuff i'm going to the internet and you know different uh places i can check stuff to see hey you know is this something that's actually happening is this actually real could it happen you know how close to his uh to, to what he's writing is science really is it, is it getting close to this stuff um so like I said, this book just now the now the ending. Um, I'll just talk about the ending just a little bit. You know, if you read the synopsis of the book, it kind of toys with the idea of whether this is a dream world or if it's real, if it's actually happening. Is is the main character still in cryogenic stasis, or is he uh, is he dreaming? Is he actually is this actually happening? <clears throat> you know. Uh, I'm not gonna say I disliked the ending, but it it, it was it was it, it did keep you keep you it kept me guessing throughout the entire book. You know, there was a lot of instances where the main character would be like, "Oh, this may just be a dream world. This must be a dream world because this really can't happen." But uh, once it gets to the ending, 
um, basically he finds out, no, it's not a dream world. This actually is happening. And uh, it, it wasn't my favorite ending. Um, but at the same time, I feel like it really he could have went either way with it. And it would have been fine. So it's one of those endings that it, it, it was kind of... It didn't really matter all that much to the book itself. For the for the whole for, uh, for the whole of the book, um, hopefully that makes sense. But it was it was an enjoyable ending. A lot of books just kind of poop out at the end. This one didn't do that. It, it even in the last couple pages, it kind of kept you guessing and kept you on the edge of your feet. But uh, the writing, guys, I, I just can't say enough about the this guy's writing. You know, I like I said I have I started out with Steve Alton from the first book he ever read Meg and this wasn't you know a spe he ended up re-releasing Meg years later as a special edition with all the extra content that he took out I read the first bare bones this is what he came out with first book that he read wrote that he wrote and while his writing was good I'm not gonna say it wasn't good it was it was a typical first uh effort by a new author you know while it wasn't uh, Stephen King esque, it was still good. This though, as as his novels have progressed and he's gotten more and more things written, his writing has gotten so much better. And to me, this is the pinnacle of his writing. This is the best I've read of his stuff. It's fantastic. It's just well, it's just full of vivid imagery. Um, it was it wasn't necessarily the fastest read. That's the Maybe if, if I had a a gripe about Steve Alton, and it's not even really a gripe, it's that he's not necessarily the fastest read. And I'll tell you, at least some of them, some of his books are. This one wasn't just because. It wasn't because it was slow. It wasn't because it wasn't well written. It was because I was trying to keep up myself with the science behind everything. There was a lot of science behind it, and it wasn't overwritten to the point where you couldn't understand it, but it was still technical to a sense. Um, m most people, there's a lot of people I think out there that just, it would just kind of fly over their heads. I'm not saying I'm one of those people that just understood it, but, you know, I may have understood it a little bit better than most, maybe just because I've written, written, uh, read a lot of his books, but, uh, even then, the science was written in such a way it was very, very interesting. And like I said, it made me want to go fact check stuff. Made me want to go to the internet, look at stuff, see how close this stuff is to becoming reality. So, like I said, if that was the one gripe I had, that was it. You know, it was, and like I said, it wasn't even a gripe. I enjoyed every minute of this book. Um, it wasn't a particularly long book. I like 300 some odd pages it wasn't super long um compared to some but uh like i said very well very well written book guys uh like i said steve alton steve alton the omega project just a fantastic book guys and a lot of his books and i'll just tell you a lot of his books are series based and most of them are chronological order. You can't just jump into one. You know, the Meg series has like five books. You can't really just jump into the fourth book and know what you're reading. You kind of have to start at the beginning. This one is not in one of the series. You can pick it up. And that was, you know, I this was one of his most recent books. I picked it up. And, you know, I didn't have to read a book previous to this. It wasn't a long series behind it. So, you know, if this is your first venture into Steve Alton, this is a great one to start with. Um, I would suggest starting with Meg. It's a fantastic book. So, but if this is what you want to start with, this is great. Um, he, I will say this, and uh, he is very active on his social media Instagram, Facebook. Um, so if you do get into Steve Alton stuff, look him up on Facebook. Look him up on Instagram. You know, you can even email. You know, he'll email you directly. 
Uh, very good with his fans. So uh, check him out, guys. He's got, a, I want to say he's got like 12 to 15 books. It, it's quite a few. And I've read probably half of them, and they've never read. I've never read one that wasn't good. So like I said, Steve Alton, you know, Mega Project. Check it out. And hit that subscribe button wherever it is. The bell thing, you know. I'm going to upload these pretty pretty fast and pretty often as I'm getting through them. Um, I've got like three, two, two more books or something like that that I've read that I'm going to upload uh, reviews for here pretty soon. So subscribe, leave comments, give me suggestions, whatever you need to. And I will see you guys next time.